All right, welcome to our ninth and final episode from our Evolution 2 series. And this episode is going to deal with a very important theory when it comes to evolution. And it deals with how did mitochondria and chloroplast evolve? Now, as you learned in Chapter 7 when we learned about cells, that mitochondria and the chloroplast are the probably, you can argue, two of the top three important organelles. The mitochondria, of course is important because it's the powerhouse of the cell. And remember it does a process called cellular respiration where you're going to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to ATP. And then chloroplasts, remember, they're going to be found in plants and they're the site of photosynthesis. Okay? Now, we learned about this in chapter 7, we learned, I'm sorry, we learned about this in chapter 9, and we learned about this in chapter 8. Okay, now, um, the endosymbiotic theory was created by an American biologist in the 20th century named Lynn Margulies, and she stated that mitochondria were the descendants of symbiotic aerobic bacteria. Now, remember, aerobic means that you're using oxygen. All right, now, symbiosis is a word that we really haven't come across yet. And what symbiosis means, it's a close relationship, get myself caught up here, between separate species. And when we get to ecology, we're going to go over this. Let me spell species right over here. Okay, S-P-E-C-I-E-S. That's crappy spelling, but that's the best I can do under this pressure. All right, um, we're going to learn about symbiosis when we get into uh, ecology a little bit later, but just remember that these two species in this case are kind of working together to help both survive, okay? And the chloroplasts are descendants of photosynthetic bacteria. Now remember, photosynthesis, you're using light to combine carbon dioxide and water together to form sugars like glucose. All right, that should all just be review. We've had those series of screen casts in the first semester. All right, so bacteria that, that were, you know, let me rephrase this. The bacteria that was aerobic and could produce energy and the bacteria that may have been photosynthetic that would become the uh, chloroplasts, they first entered as parasites and or ingested prey. But for some reason, this prey was never digested by the lysosome. So it could be possible that the mitochondria and the chloroplasts somehow tricked the cell into thinking that this was just another organelle. Okay. Now, the mitochondrial bacteria, they did, remember, cellular respiration, um, breaking down glucose to make ATP, and then some of them did photosynthesis using light to put carbon dioxide and water together to make sugar. Now, because these guys evolved from prokaryotic cells, this helps explain why mitochondria and chloroplasts, they have their own DNA. They have DNA that's going to be used to go through transcription and translation to produce their own proteins to make these guys work. All right, so it kind of helps explain why these organelles have their own DNA where every other organelle in the cell, except the nucleus, doesn't have any DNA. All right, so this picture is going to explain the endosymbiotic theory in a little bit more detail. All right, so over here we have the aerobic bacteria, and this is the one that's going to become the mitochondria. All right, so these bacteria are being engulfed by a process called endocytosis. Endo meaning bring in, cytosis meaning cellular process. Now this is an anaerobic uh, bacteria, which means it doesn't use oxygen. Fat. So the only way that this guy knows how to get energy is through the process of glycolysis. So if this engulfed aerobic bacteria has the ability to make ATP to help this, then there's going to be an incentive for the bacterium not to eat this new prey, all right? <clears throat> now, we have some photosynthetic bacteria. Notice they look like a chloroplast, and they're going to be engulfed the same way through endocytosis. 
And on your way, you could have plant-like protists or you can have animal-like protists. And these would be your first eukaryotic cell. And from there, you're going to be able to evolve into all the eukaryotic creatures that we see today, including plants, animals, fungus, and of course, the protists that you see here. All right, so what is the real hard evidence to back up this theory? Well, there's basically four prongs to it. Number one is the size and structure of the bacteria. All right, mitochondria and chloroplasts are about the same size as most bacteria. And in fact, the membrane is almost identical to that of aerobic bacteria that we find out in nature. The genetic material. As we said earlier on a slide, that chloroplast and mitochondria both have a bacterial-like DNA. And the genes that are found in a mitochondria are totally different than the genes that are found in the nucleus. Okay? And third one, the ribosomes. Mitochondria and chloroplasts both have their own ribosomes. They're more bacterial in their size and structure. And they actually uh, are going to be able to make these bacterial-like proteins easier than what nuclear DNA would do. All right? Actually, I'm going to cross this out. And I want you to put down here ribosomes. This is just a mistake on my part. All right? And finally, reproduction. Remember how uh, bacterial cells will divide through a process called binary fission? Well, mitochondria and chloroplasts will reproduce by binary fission, and this takes place independently of the cell cycle for the rest of, of the cell. So, for example, like the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell is going to go through mitosis. Remember, mitosis has PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Well, even as the cell's going through that, we may have the mitochondria at the same time going through their binary fission. All right. So we've got one, two, three, four different pieces of evidence to support the endosymbiotic theory of how mitochondria and chloroplasts evolved. All right. That's going to end this series on evolution, too. So until our next series, we're going to catch you on the flip side. <laughs>